Good afternoon, folks. The topic today is the magnetic pole shift with some perspective to help understand the top story from yesterday. Earth is in the midst of a geomagnetic excursion, and it is accelerating. And yesterday's top story was this one, describing the changes to the field that have taken place since the year 2000. But before we get into that, let's run down the background, shall we? The magnetic field began really weakening in the mid-1800s, and this article from NASA in the year 2000 said we were down by 10%. By the way, this is my archived footage because NASA has since deleted their article. But in the year 2010, the Swarm Magnetic Mission from the ESA updated that number to 15% lost, and that is indeed quite the acceleration. 10% lost in about 150 years, and then another 5% lost in just a decade. You may recall the famous interview Dr. Flobergoggin gave at the time. He was the mission manager of Swarm, and he concurred that the field had begun weakening 10 times faster, and that we had gone from losing 5% per century to 5% per decade, which is exactly what the Swarm report showed. Now, while a lockdown on that data point occurred at the time, here in 2024, we still haven't had another official update on the field loss. But this paper in 2021 described how plasma was beginning to penetrate lower into the atmosphere. The study focused on the South Atlantic anomaly and to what L-shell level those particles were penetrating, showing how the plasma used to get trapped and blocked around 6,000 kilometers up, but had now routinely penetrated to 5,500 kilometers in altitude. The study made sure to note that the weakening of Earth's magnetic field and therefore the particle penetration would continue to get worse and also confirmed the acceleration of the field loss. That acceleration had been the subject of another study just a few months earlier. This one studied the final periods in past geomagnetic reversals, the magnetic pole shifts, and showed how they began slowly and then accelerated, and right before the flip, the changes were happening about 100 times faster than they are now. We have been seeing that acceleration, not quite to that ultimate extreme just yet, but we're on our way and getting closer. And that has been noted in about 40 different papers over the last four years, including the one we had yesterday, which was describing the pulse accelerations and geomagnetic jerk activity related to Earth's changing field. When you see descriptions like polarity reversal and rapid fluctuations, that is the track towards that ultimate extreme we're heading for now. Perhaps the biggest paper on this subtopic came out earlier this year, written by Dr. Sergei Simonenko. His list of accolades is too long to put here. I've just added some of my favorite ones. He's probably the best geophysicist right now out of Russia, one of the best overall worldwide. And his entire focus for years has been the impending magnetic pole shift, the magnetic reversal. It really took a leap in 2014 when he published this paper. He had pinpointed a major acceleration pulse in 2007 and suggested we had crossed the threshold and were now heading full force towards the flip. He also gave credit to the importance of recognizing the last excursion 12,000 years ago, the Gothenburg magnetic flip, and the intermediate approximately 6,000-year cycle, doubling up to the full 12,000-year reversal schedule. We are right on time and seeing the signs on our planet. Meanwhile, without official data on the field loss, we have been tracking it in another way, by comparing modern solar storms with past ones and seeing how much more aurora are produced now. It has been concerning, to say the least. Last year, in 2023, we shattered the auroral records with only modest solar activity, and it actually kept happening the very week after we reported it with aurora invading lower latitudes over and over. We had openly been suggesting that a major acceleration pulse must have occurred in early 2023 because there was no other explanation for the auroral displays being so extreme. And earlier this year, Dr. Simonenko was back with this one, confirming that we are about to have the magnetic pole shift and, more importantly, that in March of 2023, Earth endured the greatest magnetic anomaly yet, which is exactly what we had been speculating for a year. It is why the auroral displays have been so extreme. It is why the May 2024 solar storm broke records despite the solar activity that caused it not being so record-breaking. Folks, we are on the cliff's edge for the magnetic pole shift. This process is going to finalize in the years ahead, and it's going to be an absolute disaster. 
For more on that disaster, let's reorient ourselves with the facts about what happens to Earth during these magnetic pole shifts. I hope you find this review informative and we'll reconvene in the morning for the daily show. Time to take notes here, folks, our video from two months ago. Earth is undergoing a cyclical magnetic pole shift, a geomagnetic excursion. This is an extinction event for many species every cycle, and we're going to go over the basics here for those new to the topic and exactly why it is such a scary thing for our planet. It has been well known that the magnetic field is weakening and the magnetic poles are shifting. These happen regularly on a cycle. That cycle is due again right now, and we are already seeing the exact signs. In the year 2000, NASA and geophysicists said we were down in the field by 10%. And the ESA's magnetic mission updated that number to 15% in 2010 and said that we had gone from losing 5% of our planet's field per century to 5% per decade. Let's see what that looks like visually. With the 2020 mark, another 5% down, and the 2023 interpolated value when the latest acceleration occurred. The first 10% took 150 years to lose. The next 10% only 20 years. After the latest acceleration, we could be losing as much as 5% every five years. I plotted the most likely curve here, showing that around 2040 we will have the full flip, the excursion. And it may be a few years before or after that, but this is as accurate as it can be. The purple line you see there shows when we expect to be 50% down in the early 2030s, when it will be at a level that makes our technological way of life unsustainable and when its impact on weather will be very extreme. Yesterday we shared the critical new chapter out of a new university textbook hitting the topic of space radiation and extinctions, and the two things it mentions are of critical importance for us over the coming years, the ozone loss due to particle-driven molecular destruction and the extra exposure to cosmic ray space radiation basically climate chaos and radiation exposure. This is because the only thing standing in the way of those effects is the magnetic field of Earth, the one that is weakening in this ongoing pole shift. To compare, here is a side-by-side -side of the normal and excursion or pole shift magnetic field. On the left, the strong field protection in bright colors and polar configuration, but on the right, we see the poles are actually near the equator, and the brighter colors are gone, leaving us more vulnerable to that dangerous space radiation. After two decades of scientific disagreement, the naysayers have now disappeared. Every major study on this topic in the last several years shows that these magnetic reversals, these pole shifts, are extreme events for the environment. They take a huge toll on the biosphere, and that is usually due to the extra radiation and ozone destruction driven climate chaos. The best such paper directly tied those extinctions to past pole shifts in history, and they offer us a warning for the future. These, by the way, are the top scientists in the field in the world's number one geophysics journal. Now, the aurora are beautiful, no doubt, but they have been offering us a warning lately, breaking records, appearing too often, and with less than expected solar activity. They're already having measurable effects on the ozone and on the environment as a whole. There are hundreds of studies confirming the ozone destruction by solar protons, solar electrons, and cosmic rays, all of which are penetrating into the atmosphere more with the weakening field and will reach critical levels in the years ahead. This extra radiation does two main things. Its ozone destruction allows more ultraviolet light into the Earth's system, causing more heat, and the extra cosmic rays amplify the extremes of weather of all kinds, heat, cold, wind, lightning, storms, flooding, drought, basically taking Earth's weather and pushing it to the max in all directions. These things not only impact the climate, but living creatures. That extra ultraviolet light is dangerous for animals and plants, as well as the microbiota of the planet, including the plankton and chlorophyll food chain foundations in the ocean. The cosmic rays provide a similar amplification of particle radiation on this same life as well. Everything from cancer to cellular dysfunction to DNA mutations. Furthermore, 
The magnetic field of Earth usually funnels much of this particle radiation to the polar region, where virtually nobody lives and far less life exists. But in the excursion scenario, those polar cusps are found at lower latitudes, and an extra directing of that energy and radiation will hit the life-housing regions of the Earth, while at the same time, the field is also less able to block the pushing of Van Allen belt electrons downward into the atmosphere during solar storm impact. It's a double whammy for the latitudes where most of the life on Earth is found. So why do these scientists keep finding extinction and major biosphere stress related to the magnetic pole shifts? It's because of those climate impacts and both the extra ultraviolet and particle radiation. Taking extra radiation when your environment shifts dramatically is a serious challenge for most life. But it gets worse. It's not just birds that use the magnetic field for navigation, but many other creatures as well including several marine species like dolphins, whales, sharks, turtles, and various fish. And it's not just for migration, but foraging and finding reproductive zones. Similar impacts are found for insects in terms of hibernation, egg success, and activity in the day versus night. And even plants use Earth's field. It's critical for germination, seed health, growth, and flowering. So let's make that climate chaos extra radiation, and navigational struggles, not to mention the problems with the plants. This is why the scientists are able to so clearly see that these cyclical magnetic pole shifts are major problems for life on Earth. As humans deal with these challenges, both directly and indirectly through their impact on the food chain, we have also made ourselves largely dependent on electricity as a society. When the magnetic field gets weak enough, the sun is going to turn off the lights, destroy every power grid, and when that happens, there's no more heat, no more water treatment or distribution, no refrigeration or food transport, no gas, no ATMs, no phones or internet, no 911, no critical infrastructure at all. This is a growing issue, and it's on Earth's bingo card for the years ahead. In just the last year, things have taken an even more alarming turn. The March 2023 magnetic anomaly has accelerated this process even faster. We're on the way down much quicker now, which is what we're seeing with the accelerated downward curve in this chart. It is the reason why a minor solar event in April of 2023 caused an unprecedented and new kind of plasma penetration solar storm effect. It is the reason why 2023 broke the low-latitude auroral record, and it is the reason why we got impossibly low-latitude auroras this past weekend from solar activity that was significant, but it wasn't extreme. In the past, these kinds of aurora only happened with solar activity that was 20 to 50 times stronger than what we got. It happened this week because our planet is losing its protection and becoming more vulnerable. If you think you are ready to learn more about this cycle, the details of why it happens, and what it will eventually make the sun do, see the resource video linked below. If you understood this video, you're probably ready for the advanced information. Subscribe and I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe everyone.